Okay, JB, something's happened here to this 38 project. Let's yeah. see, it. what's the update here? Well, this is beginning very close to the paint stage. Um, right before you paint it, you have to put a primer on the body. Uh, there can't be any sanding after the fact because you're going to sand through to the other primer. So this is very, very, very close to being ready for just a final dusting and paint. Okay. Uh, the reason we use a red primer is because we're using a red color over it. And the red is a, is a c combination of clear medium, red pigments, translucent red, and, and metal plate. So okay. when we're doing that, you got to remember that you're going to be seeing through the paint into the primer because the primer is because the paint itself is translucent. If that color is not in concert with the color itself, then it starts fighting the color. An example would be if you were to paint it with gray primer or black primer, then you would be seeing through to the gray or the black and it would be changing the color in a very material way. So we don't want to do that. We want the the background that the uh, metal flake paint is put onto to be the same as the paint itself so that it reads red regardless of the attitude that you're looking at it regardless of the panel itself and of course as we talked about a number of times Zephyrs are one of the few cars on the planet that are all round there are no flat spots so that light is always changing it's always morphing as you walk around it as it drives by it's going to look like completely different um, from the rear, from the side, depending on the angle of the sun. And that sun is what's uh, beating down on, the, on that clear color and showing you what's below it. And so we definitely have to use uh, a, a red primer for red paint. You have to use uh, the, the appropriate primer. There are a, a number of different colored primers now that you can use to achieve that goal because the paint is so translucent. Uh, it's necessary to have that regardless of what color you pick. It seems like also when you darken the primer, you see some different, yeah, maybe it's some it's little exactly. small things to what change or fix. You gotta remember that the paint is clear. It's actually gonna allow you to see the primer uh, and that's what gives it that depth. Uh, that's right. how, what separates a really good paint job from just a paint job is that you, your, your body panels are all incredibly well finished. As you see here, uh, there's just absolutely nothing to look at other than you can look at it in the sun now because it's a darker color and we can start to see any a thousandth of an inch would show up and uh, that's why right before you p we uh, paint it he'll he'll take a, a stick uh, sander and about 800 or a thousand paper and he'll just dress it across it in case in some case we've, we've missed a low spot or, or we still need to take down a high spot okay and that that is a very careful process we can't take the red primer off if we find a problem, we got to reprime it again right. to get it back red, so that the, our base is always red. We don't want to sand through to the other colors below it. I see. Okay, so this gotcha. is really, really close. How many layers of primer do you use uh, altogether? How does that? Oh work? boy, you know, you probably put on ten or fifteen. You wow. sand off uh, twelve, at least ten or twelve of them. Yeah. You it really like want to keep it very, very thin. Yep. because it's unstable uh, and if you get it real thick okay. uh, and there's some primers especially lacquer primers are famous for for being unstable so we don't use any lacquer primers you got to use a material that is is actually um, going to set hard and stay that way for a number of years so it looks like he's uh, just spritzed it a little bit up here right. I guess he's looking for little things to fix or he's yeah he's, do something he's concerned with it. that uh, in all of this tight detail he may have an area that's going to have to be uh, further address. So what he's going to do, he just barely touched it with some gray primer and that'll all get sanded off. But in the process, when he's sanding it, if he sees a, lo a, a bit of a gray, that means it's low. I see. And okay. now he's got to take the entire thing back down to, to a, so that all levels are, are the same. I you see. can't have lows and you can't have highs. Right. And okay. it gets down to very, very, very fine uh, amount of work. And uh, our guy is, you know, a fanatic about yeah, getting he's it correct. Making sure it's going to be exactly, exactly right. Exactly, yeah. And a car like this is mind numbingly difficult to do. Um, well, I'm thinking all the, even just in the door jam, all the creases and. Yeah, exactly. All that's got to be addressed. There. You can't just gloss over it. Same thing with the yeah. door. Right. You've got 20 feet of door opening right. and 20 feet of door edge that right. you've got to attend to. That no, takes time. And, and, and most. 
paint jobs, frankly, fall down right about there. Yeah. You know, I've seen some wow. very expensive cars, and the jams were, were just not that good. Yeah, right. That wow. When the doors are closed, of course, you can't even see them, so the, so your attention, kind of, they yeah. just kind of forget them. Uh, but it's one of the signs, like we talked about earlier, of a really good uh, I'm going to walk paint, around front and just job. see how this. Yeah, you can see that now we pull this all together with a grill, interfaces with the nose. It's right. a really, really complicated uh, uh, connection between the two. And like I said, we went through a number of grills before we found one that was that was really yeah. straight and original because a lot of them have been have been bent up and repaired and, and replated and yeah. they wouldn't fit any car, much less this car. So, Wow, yeah, so wow, this is looking, yeah. looking so we're good. We're getting really close to being actually It's going to be fun to see it. it then we got to push it inside it. and start putting it back together. Yeah. And um, at that point, uh, maybe uh, we'll start uh, doing some of the work underneath the car. This car is going to get uh, four-wheel disc brakes. So we're going to take the rear end and the front end off of it uh, and, oh, that's and redo good. it. That's and another whole story to itself. Exactly. That's what that's what comes up after the paint. Okay. And then uh, the engine will be coming along here uh, probably within four to six weeks, hopefully. And okay. uh, we've, that's well underway. Yeah. And uh, so we're real tickled. It's going to hit here about the right time. Cool. Well, this is a great update. Yep. And uh, speaking of engine, I think we'll... We'll have a look at those heads that you yes. guys polished okay. up. All right, great. JV, I recognize these by now. These are heads for the V12 flathead. Correct. But boy, do these the two pairs sure look different. Yeah, this is a, this is how they come stock. They weren't polished except later on uh, Continentals, but the Zephyrs did not come with polished heads. They were aluminum heads because they were better about dissipating heat out of the engine, uh -huh. and they still work really well. We've talked about this earlier, but these are g becoming really scarce. You mm -hmm. can find a lot of them that aren't any good, but uh, they're either bent or twisted or eroded. This particular pair has already been repaired and okay. machined so that it's flat, so it'll go back on the block oh, properly. I you can see, see right? that this has been machined. They're in good shape. Okay, that, that color is to give them an indication. And one of the, one of the we sent three over, one of them didn't make it. It just was too bad. And okay. so these are the, these are the, the actually we've had this two pairs done. And um, this, this is the second pair. This is for a customer's uh, car that we're doing. And um, we, uh, when I walked wow, over and saw difference. it, I, <laughs> I realized that I don't have one. <laughs> so um, I'm going to take the next pair yeah. and uh, when we're done with this one. And uh, that's going to be the ones on my, on mine. Okay, on your 38. If you, if you notice, these are, these are real close to being done. But you can see how really beautiful they that are once they're just polished. So wait a minute, just to make sure I'm g got it right. So you're saying that these are exactly the same as these? Pretty much, only yeah. Polished up. That's just exactly. The, you polished them up. Okay. Yep. On the outside, you didn't polish just the inside. <laughs> no, no, no. The inside is is been decked been and machined. cleared and machined. Yeah. And and also some welding done. You can see that same things occurred on these guys here. Okay. Uh, there'll there'll be some areas. Well, this this particular one, I think it's got a. Here's a welded area. You can still see a little tiny line in it, uh, but it's all been repaired properly. Usually, these are all uh, hogged out from water erosion, that sort okay. of thing. People don't put antifreeze in engines, and as a consequence, the water gets after the, the aluminum. If okay. you keep antifreeze in the engine, um, it'll it'll never rust again. It'll never erode. Uh, aluminum okay. is a good material, but you can't put just water water in there. Right. It, it, there's electrolysis that's going on in there. And, uh, and also water is, is very, very corrosive. Uh, it, just look at, you know, the, some of the look steel at, that's been yeah. sitting around the water. It, so it, if you're putting pure water in your car, yeah, that's you like if be. you're on the side of the no, road and you're just be. trying to get somewhere. And yeah, that's get fine. And, and yeah. for short term, that's fine. Yeah. But you really should be running, um, it, to the extent that you can, you could use... Uh, Distilled water and and and, uh, and and antifreeze are a really good combination. And it wow, it protects the in, all the inner inner parts of the engine. I guess I get drawn to shiny things. I'm just yes, impressed with how shiny. It's not hard to do. <laughs> it's just what it's a not difference. Hard to do. This That's really dresses up the engine. And then then we're going to do another set, <coughs> which is going to be uh, uh, jet hotted, which is a a material. What you you the the heads are, are sandblasted. So they're really clean, uh -huh. and then a, and then a ceramic material is applied to it, and then it's put in an oven and it's baked on so that it'll take the heat. It's also really attractive. 
And we're going to do that on our next set after these two guys. Wow. And uh, we're going to do that. And well, those are going to look so amazing. Yeah, they really are. The and they'll stay that way because you can keep them clean. These really oh, are just right. about impossible to keep clean. Right. You obviously. can even see just if you get any yeah, kind of moisture in the world, or anything, uh, it just, just Yeah, there's sits no way there. to clean it because you've got all these pits on the surface. Right. This is pretty labor intensive to do this, but boy, the difference is when you open that engine compartment. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs>